Hello, everyone. Today, I have a very special guest, and we've been working tirelessly to find a date that would work for both of us. I'm so happy to introduce my friend, Romina Wilmot. Romina, finally, we are here. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. It is A pleasure for me to be here with your audience. I know we go way back. Way, way back. (laughs) Yes, yes. And and, um, it's just so great to reconnect. And and of course, when you call me, I'm there for you. I'm uh, happy to to connect with you anytime and and talk about anything you want to talk about. I know you are an amazing uh, DJ. You know, you have years of experience doing that since I met you. So I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Initiative because it is pe- perfect for you. And I know great things are coming for you, my friend. <laughs> I, I accept that. I accept that. Thank you so much. But you, I mean, you have you have some great things that are happening for you. So let's just get right into it. Tell us, who is Romina? Yes. So, uh, well, first and foremost, I am a mother of two. I am a, a wife and I have been working in in healthcare, in the health healthcare space in Boston. As you know, Boston is the mecca of healthcare in the Absolutely, country. Absolutely, yes. And, <laughs> and I've been living here now. I moved here when I was 11 years old. From Honduras in Central mm-hmm. America. Mm. So it That's is another a, thing we have in common. We are both yes. immigrants. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And as you know, uh, be, being here in Boston is such a great place with lots of opportunities. And I, I went to the Boston public schools here, to college here. That's how we met. Exactly. And, and it just... I'm, I'm just a woman who who is uh, grateful for all the great opportunities for for God's grace and in my life and I really at this at this time I also want to uh, use all this uh, privilege and these blessings to help others to bless others because we have been going through difficult times especially in the last few years especially in our communities Mm -hmm. and I just feel that I need to do something about it so so that's that's who I am I'm a person who wants to help other people bless other peoples because we have a lot of work to do mm-hmm. and we are a, a, a multicultural diverse immigrant community here and we have really been uh, just going through difficult situations with the pandemic and I just want to be able to add some value, a grain of salt to <laughs> yes. a better place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you just said earlier, you want to help our community. When you say our community for the, for the uh, benefit of those who are listening, can you define what is yeah. that when you talk about our community? Yeah. Yes. Well, our diverse communities or um, immigrant communities and people who are uh, underserved, who have been, um, uh, really uh, ha- having difficulties uh, have had difficulties in having access mm-hmm. to health care to resources do it to language low health literacy uh and just immigrant status and mm-hmm. and, and uh, so so those what i mean when i say our communities those can be you know the hispanic communities communities, refugees obviously I am, um, I speak Spanish, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where I can add value right away. So right. that would be really the, uh, my, the community in which I'm, I'm really working the most with. Right. But, uh, but, you know, here in Boston, there's like Cape Verdeans, Haitian Creoles. And, and I, you know, work with- Boston has a very diverse yes. immigrant yes. community. I yes. have to, I really yes. have to admit. So, and one of the reasons I really wanted to have this conversation with you, my friend, is that, you have embarked on some amazing work recently and I just happened to to get your video on my Facebook feed and I'm like whoa Romina what's happening you know you came out big and bold and I saw your branding was just vibrant and that really captured my attention it's like what finally you know so I wanted to know we went to college together I know you had an interest in uh, you will be in front of the camera you were you know the camera just love you at that time what is it that you wanted to be when we were in college and then we can step into where you are today 
what what yes. what happened uh, yes yes so when we first met mm-hmm. going to college as you know when you maybe if you remember me very I was very shy very introvert so I'm more I was more always behind the scenes right right I was like behind the camera production uh, I love the whole multimedia communications part, broadcasting, but more behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I started to get into the advertising marketing field. I went to study abroad to uh, to Madrid, and and I was more in that in, in that industry. And uh, you know, came back to Boston, and uh, you actually I did a few internships in New York City for a Hispanic advertising agency came back uh, to Boston and, and did some also work in the advertising space with advertising agencies. Then I, w- then I moved to the client mm-hmm. side for big brands like Staples, TJ Maxx and, and Marshalls, uh, which are based out of, uh, you know, uh, here in Massachusetts. And uh, yeah, so I was just, you know, having a, a great career and just w- working in marketing departments for Fortune 500 companies. So that really helped me gain so much experience, mm-hmm. learn from very smart people. And I'm very thankful to, to those experiences. And I, I have to, I have to tell you when I am going back to that that video when you launch your new venture, which we'll eventually get into. But um, I reached out to you, and I don't know if you know this, Romina, <laughs> but I mean, we talk, but we haven't really had a chance to because we your schedule is just really crazy. I think we are both very busy. So um, one of the things that helped me to get to where I am today doing this podcast was actually, I was inspired by you. Uh-huh. I reached out to you and then I was like, wow, I really love your branding. And then you connected me with the super talented Ina Coveney, who I worked yes. with. And um, that's how I got this podcast started. I got started because I was inspired by you because I remember it's like, oh my goodness, Romina is taking off. Wow. I was like, what am I doing? And you just, you made me think and it's like, you know, there are things that I can do. There are things that I love. There are things that I wanted to do. And I was just so inspired by you. So I just want to let you know that. And I want to say oh. um, thank you for that. So what was the big pivot for you? Um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who talk a good game, but never actually get to do what they say they want to do. And there, there could be many different reasons for that. So what were your fears? We went to broadcasting school, broadcast communications. So we went to a very creative school. What happened that you you started doing something very big now? But what what happened to make it take that long before you get to do actually what you wanted to do? Yes, yes. Well, I started working in the health first healthcare space mm-hmm. back in 2010 mm-hmm. when I first had my my first I, I had a, my first child my mm-hmm. baby so it allowed me to have flexibility mm-hmm. it was an industry that allowed me to have flexibility and I was always in the communications marketing uh you know connecting p- people with resources space community outreach which I love and and then after working there in that space for 10 years I saw the need for of providing access to, to people, to access information, resources about programs that they didn't know about. And it was there, available to them, but just, mm-hmm. just, they just didn't have any ideas of how to um, access them or uh, how to, uh, you know, get in, in different programs and, and just, you know, with low health literacy. So then I started to get ideas, right? Like, oh, it would be great to, to be able to help organizations better engage diverse communities and at the same time helping the community navigate the system Mm -hmm. and it was just something that I it was always in my head in my heart and and like you mentioned there's always the doubts the Mm -hmm. security the fear like oh is that something new what if it fails right we all and, have those fears. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and like, uh, what if it's not accepted or people's going to look at me and, you know, what will people say? And just all these different things that the imposter syndrome right. it was there. So it was like, it was in my heart, but it was like so hard to, to start, you know, so hard to, to get that first step. And then I realized and I said, wow, I have so much talents in me so yes many, you know that I have developed throughout the years and and in so much 
added value that I, I can add because I am bilingual, bicultural. And not only and, that, you also hosted television programs. So yes. all of that you had, you had just holding on to. Yes, yes. And I did. I hosted television programs at community mm -hmm. stations for free because I was really, I wanted to pursue my passion, which was mm -hmm. to provide education. Mm -hmm. and, and I say this because it's something that anybody can do. You just go to your local community uh, cable access and, and, and you can start a show right away talking about whatever you want to talk. And, mm -hmm. and so, so I, I did that. So it was something that I was always doing. And then in, in the beginning of 2020, right before the pandemic, I started to, to, to launch my consulting business, RW Consulting, which is to help healthcare organizations engage with diverse communities in regards to healthcare marketing. And that's how I connected with Ina and she helped me with the brand. Um, and then I, I, the, as soon as I launched my website, it was the week before the shutdown mm -hmm. when I launched my website. And, and so, you know, so it was cool. It was great, great timing, right? To be able to now have my Perfect website. Perfect timing, yes. yes. But then I think when I saw what was going on around me in, during that difficult time and, and, and even working, you know, in my, with my job, nine to five with my employer, uh, seeing that we, can, we couldn't go to live events in, in health fairs, and we couldn't do any outreach in the community because everything was in lockdown. I said, wow, I really should um, create a virtual health fair. A virtual I, health fair. Yes, a virtual health fair because um, it is convenient, it is efficient, um, it, you can access it 24-7. Yes, mm -hmm. and at the same time- And it was said, free, right? It's free. Yes, okay. free, free for everybody because Again, the mission, the goal is to provide access, access. to provide access. Yes. So we want to make this accessible uh, as possible. And then at the same time, making it more efficient and less costly to the, to the organizations. Right. Because I've been on the other side. I've been there in the organizations. And I know that many times we, we do all these live events, but the people don't show up. Why? Mm -hmm. Many reasons. Transportation. They didn't know about it. It's not in their community. It's somewhere else. The weather, as you know here, the weather right. can change. <laughs> Any in, minute. A day. in the morning, it's warm. Then the snow can, can come right. in the afternoon. So the weather. Sometimes the, the day, if it's on a weekend, if it's on a weekday, people may be working. And if it's on a weekend, that makes it uh, more difficult for organizations to, to have mm -hmm. someone to go on a Saturday. And that person may or may not speak another language, another Spanish. And we're talking with very diverse communities in the city. Um, so it was something that I actually was thinking about for a few years before, but then the, the shutdown happened. And I just said- it was the perfect time for you to just yes, run with it. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. myhealthfair.com. I, didn't know, I had no idea about creating websites. Uh, I mean, I know I, I, I had somebody create- You had me, resources, but, yeah. But I had to start it from scratch mm -hmm. and getting a designer, a, a developer. And I had this specific idea that I had to really go, I had to go through a lot of versions until we finally got it right because I wanted to bring that, the healthcare concept that you see in the community, I want to bring it digitally. Mm -hmm. So that, re that required a lot of, you know, doing different designs and these or change this and that and then uh yeah I went it really all the way to create this and and I know that um it, it took a long time it took a lot of work and and I knew nothing good nothing good yeah. happens quickly <laughs> yes, yes, yes but I feel that what kept me I think that it was my my passion my mission that kept me going Mm -hmm. whether this is going to take off or not, whether people will come to the website or not. I just follow my mission, what I want to do, because the people who really will want this information, they will come. They will come. They will it's come. not for everybody, but they, there's people who really benefit for this. And, and, and if you help one person, oh, it's great. You know, yes. you know what's great about this, Romina, is, is that you have put on something 
that is really needed for people that have been disenfranchised and, and without access. And so you being bilingual is the perfect person to set up this um, wonderful venture and, and having people, giving people access and the opportunity to go on demand whenever you, you can, especially in the pandemic, we have so much misinformation and to have someone that can be trusted because you are well known in the community. You've been doing community work for a very long time. And so I, I think it was really um, good to have someone like you um, making that resource available. So, um, so there was some fear you talked about earlier. So my question to you is, once you overcome that fear and you decide, you know what, this is it, I'm ready and I'm going to do this. How, how did that make you feel once you overcame that fear? How did that make you feel? Empowered. Because nice. you will get rid of the fear by doing. By doing. While it's just, you go, you go through it with the fear. But once you start moving and doing, you, you get strong. Mm -hmm. And you get just moving, you keep moving, it's like a gasoline, right? So, so, so that even with the fear, you, you, you have, you keep moving and things get easier. Mm -hmm. You get to learn, learn from mistakes, but at the same time, you have to just not be all scattered. You also mm -hmm. have to be able to have the tools to succeed. So for me, it was getting a business coach. Mm -hmm. Somebody who was there before. Who's who been had there and done that. Yes. Yes. Been there and done that. Who I can run ideas, questions back and forth. And, and that was really helpful mm -hmm. because it's, so again, many people do it without one and I, and that's okay. But then the process takes longer mm -hmm. and you most likely make, make, make more mistakes mm -hmm. or, that you can avoid if you work hand in hand with a person who actually has a business already. A the experience, business, yes. It can, it can advise you. Mm -hmm. So that was key for me, yes. So mm -hmm. what would you, I know you overcame that fear, but if you could pinpoint one thing, what would you say was that defining moment for you that propelled you to step forward? What was that one thing? Well... I think it was something that when I saw the need, mm -hmm. so something that was needed and I, and I just realized it was my moment. It was the perfect moment, it was your moment. to do mm -hmm. this. I was prepared. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to wait another year. Oh, let me take more classes. Let me do more of this. So I can right. already know. I mm -hmm. have been ready since long time ago. Okay. I was I was ready yesterday, like yes. before I started. So, so I, I just had to realize, wow, I can mm. bring so much to the table. Right, I have so much talents in me, so much skills, and really taking advantage of the resources around me. Mm -hmm. Start starting where I was. So start where you are, right? Right. Um, in in your connections, your experiences, your knowledge, everything, put it together. And then you you can be and create something really beautiful. Yeah. So so to add to that, is there any any other um, lessons you want to share with the audience so people can learn who are at the point where I am thinking I want to do something, but I'm not sure. People that are on the fence, what can you say to people who have been in the similar situation as you, who have great ideas and want to do good for community or in, in any area of, of work where, or industry where they feel they can make an impact because they have the skills to do so? I will say to start by following people they admire, F following people that they get inspired by so they can learn from them and uh, try to see who in their network is doing is doing the thing they want to do mm -hmm. and, and even connect with them talk to them or just eat. maybe they're not they don't live in your area they live in, in another part in another in another country then mm -hmm. just follow them and 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 i and i, I just say it, it start doing Mm -hmm. Less talking, more doing. Less talking, um, more action. Yes, yes. 
And uh, I will say um, definitely, well, you know, work for me is getting a coach. And I know that may not be something that a lot of people can do, right? Mm-hmm. Just get, because it's an investment. Right. But mm-hmm. believe me, it's a well-spent investment. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell getting- me about it. I use the same coach you use and look at us today. <laughs> so yeah. I think, I think, I think it's well yeah. worth it to invest in yourself if yes. you, if you have, a, a goal and there is something that is burning inside of you and you know you absolutely want to do it I I I'm a testament to that you look at people who are doing that already and you you follow their footsteps and you see what can I learn from them and and you move from there if you if you feel you you are okay and you can work it out on your own I mean everybody do what is going to work best for them but I think it's important to have to have someone guiding you someone advising you someone mentoring you into that process so that you can you can do the right things and not make too many missteps. You will have missteps, but if you have someone who's been there, done that, you will be well set to get into where you want to. So yeah. you you set up a digital space. Um, what what are some of the things that um, let's say the audience is listening or people would like to um, find out more about your your um, project? What what is it that people can get there? Yes. So myhealthfair.com or mi feria de salud, it is a virtual on-demand 24-7 virtual health fair in which the people can come and stop by different tables from different healthcare organizations such mm. as providers, health insurance programs, and social services. Um, and they can go in and stop by their table just like they do at a normal community health mm-hmm. fair and they can connect with a person who is bilingual Mm -hmm. they can even check download their brochures they can apply for jobs that actually are looking for bilingual uh, job positions who are looking for bilingual candidates Mm -hmm. because in healthcare we need that we right especially now so partnerships are key and that's what what i said earlier right Right. Look at your network. Look at your contacts. Mm-hmm. And I reach out to El Mundo newspaper. El Mundo is the largest Hispanic newspaper in New England over 40 years. I happen to know the president, Alberto. Connections. Vasari. Yes. Great. Um, yeah. And then I said, let's do a media partnership. You know, they're looking for content. I'm looking for visibility. I'm looking for an audience that I don't have. Right. As a as a person who just launched a business. And I, and we did that. We came together to co-promote each other. And, and again, they also have similar mission as mine, which is to serve, help the community. And that's very important. You need to uh, connect with people who have your similar mission if you want to do this type of partnerships. I also reach out to Influencia, like you said, local uh, organizations such as Amplify Latinx um, and, and, a, and a few others, consulates. Mm-hmm. consulates. Yes, I reach out to, I, I also work with a few consulates, the Mexican consulate, the Honduran consulate. Why? Because the, the, the community I want to connect with or I want to have get in front with and I want them to know about the services, they go, they have access to these communities. Mm -hmm. Um, And and again, I wish I could do more, but it's just one person, right? Right. So you have to prioritize. Where are you going to get the biggest bang for your buck? That's important Mm -hmm. because there's a a lot of places we can go. A lot of, mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to have a system and to have organization um, to be able to, to accomplish your goals. Wonderful. So um, what is the next milestone for you, Romina? What's next for you? Yes, yes. So definitely I want to continue to grow my health fair because I believe in it. It is something really great that is needed in the market, something very unique and innovative. Mm-hmm. And I, I trust in it and I will continue to 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 make it grow. I have it's it's a lot of work, it's not easy, right? Because I have to um create um a lot of content to, to be right. able to yes. information mm-hmm. and it's also video focus because we know that in healthcare especially with bilingual communities 
having information in video is more effective than right. just the visual is i mean i mean yeah. it's, it's i think it goes across the board too you have you have something visual it, it's more interactive it's more interesting and people you know it captures people attention immediately so uh, yes i see you are doing a lot of work you are a, a working woman you're a wife you're a mother how are you doing all of this you still you're still <laughs> working at your other job i mean how yeah. do you how do you, oh, yeah, how do you yeah. get <laughs> sleep Reminds me what I wanted to, 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 to say too to your audience, Helena. Those of you who have your nine to five, great opportunity. Great opportunity to start because you have the monies already. You can invest mm -hmm. right away. I right. Mean, for those people who may want to launch something, but they don't have the funds. And I know there's plenty, and that's very difficult, right? But those of you who are, have the nine to five, great time to invest. Invest in yourself you know, coaching, um, and, and to start any, you know, any business. How do I do it? My passion, my heart is what keeps me going. So find, find your passion, find your joy, and then you, you're going to do it no matter what. No matter what. Yeah. You, you you're going to make time. You're going to make time. You do yes. what you love. And yes. one of the things I, I have, I've experienced it myself, if you are doing what you love, it is not work. It is not a burden because you are doing something, your heart is into it and you just, you love what you're doing. It's just going to be, it's going to feel right because you are doing something that you love. And that's the key. If you, if you have something that you want to do and you don't know how to start, like Romina said, find someone who's doing something similar, engage, make connections, find a mentor, find a coach to help you get started, but don't sit down on your, on your gifts or your talent. You have to start where you are. You, if you don't start, you will never begin. So start where you are and see how you can find ways to move forward. So Romina, we are almost getting to the very end. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to let folks know how they can reach to reach out to you, how they can partner with you. Um, uh, before we get into that, though, um, are you are you do you still have fears today? Um, well, I guess so. You know, because I am I, I'm growing. Okay. I'm continuing to grow and mm -hmm. I have still so much to, to learn about. To accomplish, and, yes. And still growing and mm -hmm. learning. And that's something that I everybody should be doing, growing and learning. So mm -hmm. yes, but now I just feel more secure. secure. There's fears, but you just go, you just go without uh, stopping. Yeah, so, so the fear is there, but the fear is not controlling your destination. So you just they use the fear as a, as a form of motivation so you can, you can, it can push you or propel you to even do more. Yes. Oh, right. So what can, you wanted to say something? Uh, well, yes. I think okay. that it, the fear is, is really, I guess if you don't feel fear, you're not growing. You know, that's it right there. Right. That's it right yeah. there. <laughs> so, so um, what is one thing that people would be surprised to know about you? <laughs> you used to be shy. I don't know if you're still shy, but yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Oh, you no, no, <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I think. Well, I, I, I think that uh, you know, I, I, I'm still working in healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I still work full time in, mm -hmm. in healthcare, and you know, just launched my business. And I think I said everything. I think mm -hmm. I've been very open. I just said everything. Okay. I don't know. Right. You know me well. What do you think? <laughs> what else? <laughs> I, I, no, I don't know. I, th I think, you know, I... I think you have a big heart. Um, I think you, one of the things I learned about you very early on is like, you're very respectful and you have a lot of empathy. You care about people, which works right in line with what you are doing today. So bravo, Mormina, congratulations. And um, what you're doing in the community is making traction. People are talking about you. I see, I see you, I see you everywhere. And um, I just, I'm just so happy for you and what you are doing. So for those uh, who might want to reach out to you or make um, partner with you, how can people find you? Where can they find you? And do you have any new events coming up? Yes, definitely go to myhealthfair.com. 
We have live streamings all the time. We interview our organizations that are part of the health fair and or healthcare professionals who want mm-hmm. to share their expertise. Mm-hmm. So we have live interviews. Um, we do videos. We have a blog. Mm-hmm. Um, so myhealthfair.com. You can also find it on Facebook and Instagram. So connect with me. Connect with me and let me know if you listen uh, to this podcast and let me know. And if you want to talk to me more and ask me more questions, if you have an idea and don't know where to start, if you told me you part of a, a Helena's podcast, I'll be happy to connect with you. Wonderful. <laughs> so, so you have, you have, you have RW consulting and then you have myhealthfair.com. So they are like two entities and people can, what is the website for RW consulting? consultingrw.com okay consultingrw.com and then if you can just repeat one more time uh, myhealthfair.com .com yes all right Romina this was wonderful i you know hope we can come back and and do some more of that again and you come back and yes. tell me uh, give an update on how things are going but this was this was really nice and um it's great to connect with my friend, my one of my very first college friends. Um, yes. Yeah, after so many years. So, again, yes. I always remember you, Helena. Yes. I always remember you. You're always so smart. Always getting the best grades in the class. I remember every time we had an, a a test, mm-hmm. you will stay in the classroom the longest. You, I, I will leave. I will finish my test. You know, I will leave, and then you will stay. You will be the last person to turn in that test. Because I wanted to get everything right. (laughs) And you did. You always had the best grades. Ace, ace, ace. So you're very smart. And I always remember that about you. You you were pretty smart to Romy. I one of the things I remember about you the most was that the camera loves you. Said you work behind the scenes, but I remember I I would see you even when you were doing your community programs. The camera just you were made to do stuff like that. So again, congratulations, and it is so I am so happy to see you in your element and just doing what you love. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep inspiring. Look at you. You got me to start a podcast. Who would have thought? You know. Well, it is an, an honor for me that I was able to, to you know, to you inspire absolutely you did. who I admire and respect. And, yeah. and I just, you know, I know you'll do great. And I congratulate you again on your podcast. And Thank you, my I, friend. I'm here anytime you need me. Absolutely. <laughs> Wish you all the best. And thank you all so right. much for coming on with me today. Sure. Absolutely loved it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.